What's the deal this evening? It's a kid's hunt. Cash going, Paul Paul Charlotte's going, me. It's hard to get this girl on a tree, so when she wants to go, I gotta take her. We're gonna shoot a doe tonight. You got your flashlight? Let's go get a flashlight. All right, we got the main Mrs. Charlotte. I don't know that she's ever been hunting with me on a bow hunt, have you? You got snacks? How many? Hey, y'all watch this. I forgot to tell her. That's not what I want to show you. Watch how thick she can get in the stand and shoot the snack. Max, before I get the door shut, two minutes, max. Okay. When, when we're doing that, we don't don't slam the door because the deer hear it, okay? We gotta work on that. Oh, you got her. Do you see that blood pour out? Do you see that blood pour out? We smoked a big mama. Yes. I saw that blood come out. Smoked her dead weight. She turned just a little bit angle off. You ain't left trying to hate you ain't left hard time trying to hate me.
Go get her. Look right up there, see all that blood? That's from a double lung shot. Like this knife, it's very sharp. Okay, I'm gonna let you tag, notch the tag. Two hands. But listen, it's very important that when you get this tag out right here, make sure it's the antlers, bow antlers, and you have to put a tag on her leg, or the deer's antlers, her leg, before you move it. It's very important, okay? We always do that. All right, now you see how I marked October. Now you mark eighth. It's very sharp. We right here. Very careful. Very careful. Let's do it. Boom. All right, well, we split both kids up tonight. Both of them got a deer, or we got a deer with them and uh, they're gonna get to help clean it, and they're gonna get to eat their favorite meal tomorrow night, which is fried deer steak. And no, we can, seared. we can do some seared for him. But, their favorite meal, my favorite meal. You know, it may not be the healthiest way to cook it, but 90% of y'all out there be eating uh, chicken fingers every time you go to a restaurant, don't even bat it now. So here we go. We're gonna show y'all how we do it the Lindsay way. Still run about 75 door. yards. I'm gonna show you how to check it in, okay? Find where it says game check. Harvest registration. One of those says harvest registration. Okay. Was it a doe, button buck, doe fawn? What was it, doe? Okay, press done. 90% of this deer I'm gonna take it in cubic. A couple of these roasts I may save out for the, for the old crock pot. We just cleaned Dave's dough. This is my dough. His was 36 pounds heavy, so I got to do dishes. We're gonna cook this steak. But nonetheless, this is kind of our gutless method. If we would gut this deer if we were donating to Hush, <coughs> taking it to the locker, or, or giving it to somebody. But since we're doing this, we can slide in, get the inners, we can get the back strap, hind quarters, what little bit of meat's on the front shoulder. We can get it this way, not have to gut the deer, not make that big of a mess, and uh, we'll be eating this bad girl tomorrow night. One thing that's real important to me is I'm making this meat as pure as possible. I soaked it in water for a little bit. But what I'm doing, I'm making sure there's no fat, gristle, hair, nothing on it. Because when we eat this steak, I just want it to be as, I don't want anybody chewing too much or having a tough piece, anything like that. So that right there I can live with, but anything on the outside, cut it off. All right, what Cash and Charlotte are doing right here, they're running it every piece through the cube, right? A lot of them are small. Smaller does back straps. We run through the cube this way, then flip them that way. They're getting double cubed. It'll be extra tender. This next step is very important. I got about a hundred pieces of this cube meat that I cubed both ways. Cash did very well on it. David had to come up and finish it up, but I'll soak it in milk. It's about 11 o'clock at night. I'll, as soon as I wake up in the morning, first thing. I'll take it out and then drain this milk off of it and then just kind of let it sit in the fridge all day. Then it'll be ready for that cast iron skillet tomorrow evening. I also had about the same, this is roughly 100 pieces of these. They're, they range anywhere from, you know, a half dollar up to almost the size of your palm. So I got about 100 pieces. That'll feed our eight or 10 people we got. 100 pieces in there. Um, I made some a little thicker. Steak Diane, I ran all these through the uh, vacuum sealer, and this is uh, for the crock pot, couple of roast when uh, smaller crowd. But what I'll do, I'll put these in the fridge and I'll let these wet age all three of these packs of meat uh, for about a week, 10 days, then I'll put it in the freezer if we don't eat it before then. So that's just one more way to break it down, get it a little more tender, and uh, enjoy some fine venison.
This was a catch clean cook and we caught the deer, cleaned the deer, but since I, me and Dave both seen one of our shooter bucks, it was a little later night getting out of there. So let me tell you, come here babe, tell us what you did. Okay, so now this makes a huge mess. We are probably only cooked this maybe what once a month during deer season. Yeah. Um, okay, but I ran them through the cuber twice last night. I had a lot of small pieces this time because I used the uh, tenderloin instead of the, uh, the hind quarters. But what do you do? So the first thing you want to do is get your, it takes about two skillets worth. Um, we have about what, like 80 pieces of deer meat that we're cooking. Yeah, they're all about this size. So you get your pour, you want to use your vegetable oil, put like a thin layer, and then you just let it get hot. And then I like to test it with water and make sure it's popping. Then we get our all-purpose. You get our all-purpose flour All-purpose flour that is very important because any other flour, it does not taste the same. And, I, and so you just get a shallow dish and you put your flour in. We like to use Slacker Mama, but I did mix in a little bit of Tony's because it just, you know. Tony's can be a little salty. And the last batch turned out a little salty because I put a little bit more of that. But I combined these this time. But you can do either or. This just has more salt content than this. So whatever your liking is. I sprinkle it and I cook a few pieces in there. Taste test it. If I need to add more, I just add more seasoning. And that's pretty much it. You just want to do it for a minute on each side. And let it get a nice crispy crust on it. And here, follow me. This is what... I've ate all over the world, all kind of fine restaurants, but that right there, it don't get no better. If you ever have this, my wife or my mom's fried deer steak, you will never look at a dough the same. Lord, thank you for this day, thank you for this food, thank you for this dough you blessed us with, or these couple of doughs you blessed us with. And for seeing Rooster tonight, David seeing his big buck, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Holding up my end of the bargain with the smallest dough. I'm gonna say mine was the tastiest though.